It is Monday night, and that means it's time for Dylan Talks Tone. Uh, we got a pretty fun show planned for you this evening. We have uh, a little bit of a Nam recap sort of thing. We didn't go, but we're still going to talk about it, and we're going to talk about some other stuff too. So, welcome to the Dylan Talks Tone. The Dylan Talks Tone. Because there's only one of these on the internets, and this one happens to be it. How are you, Leslie? I'm good. How are you? Good. Uh, why don't we tell the fine folks on the interwebs how they can uh, find us and how they can be a part of our show. It's way more important tonight. Is it? Yes. All right. So tell them right away to what they're doing us. while I get this guitar because it just feels better to have a guitar in my hand. We are over at youtube.com forward slash Dylan Talks Tone. There will be a live show going on right there. You can see us right when you get on there. And if you pop in and join us, you can live chat with us, which gets you interactive Q&A, hang out real time Yep, with about a 20 second delay. But, you know, <laughs> real time with about <laughs> a 20 second delay. as real as it gets. <laughs> It's as real as our technology allows us to be. That is for sure. And then we are also live on kprlive.com and a replay will be available for the audio version tomorrow. All right. Very cool. And um, the reason it's more important tonight is because in a, in a few minutes, we're going to talk about a couple things. One is the NAM show. Now, we weren't physically there, uh, but we know a lot of people that were. And I kind of put out a call earlier in the evening. So I'm hoping that some people that were actually there will chime in on the discussion on the YouTubes so that they can, you know, kind of give us some, you know, perspective on stuff. Because all we're doing is just kind of looking through all the videos and all the people that I know that went and asking them. And, and then I kind of picked some of my I don't, I don't even know if I want to say my favorite stuff because honestly, I hate some of the stuff I'm about to show you. Well, I strongly dislike it <clears throat> for various reasons. Uh, but then I really like some other stuff and I think some stuff is kind of edgy and cool. And then uh, there is one kind of like a booby prize for a dumb idea, in my opinion, in there. So we'll talk about that as well. Uh, the other thing is we have a couple of other subjects on tap for this evening. Uh, namely we have old people and the Grammys for 500. And then we also have why guitars cost money for a thousand. So we're going to talk about that, uh, also, uh, this evening as well. That's what I got. That's what we're going to do. And then we're also going to talk about, uh, pickups because, you know, I did this video, uh, today on YouTube. We uploaded it today about, uh, you know, why you would even replace pickups in your guitar because you don't always have to. Uh, but what I would encourage you to do is if you have a guitar that you do not like uh, or a guitar that, you know, you're like, mm, I wish it was a little this or that. Um, chime in on the conversation over there with Leslie. And then what we're going to do is uh, we'll problem solve together and decide if you need new pickups or can it be something else that's cheaper or, or you know, more economical uh, fix for that that problem. So I'm hoping that this show will be as interactive as possible to make all of those things exciting and fun to talk about. So we're going to talk first of all about old people and the Grammys because last night the Grammys were on. Now I'm going to tell you, we did not watch it because mm, let's just say that I had for a while, uh, an alternative method of collecting cable television that no longer uh, is in effect. So we don't have channels. So we don't have the Grammys. So we didn't watch them. But I did follow along with social media. And I also followed along, you know, with Twitter and stuff. And I followed along today, um, you know, after some of the announcements of people that won Grammys last night. And I found it very interesting. There's something, there's a couple things that are very, very interesting about Grammys. And first of all, the, the biggest thing is all the people that thought that Grammys were dumb and everybody always thinks the Grammys are dumb and this and that and whatever. Um, 
That's what old people say. Okay. If you think the grammars are dumb, then it's possible that you're too old. Or it's possible that you're not paying attention enough to actually know what's happening at the Grammys this year. I went through the list and I counted 41 different Grammys that either I have already heard and the songs were amazing or albums were amazing or that I haven't heard yet that I want to hear because somebody that I respect worked on the project or is part of the project or something because we had this conversation last week mm-hmm. right mm-hmm. about not just dis- dismissing out of hand music because it's possible that somebody that you respect or that you like is involved with it and last night that was it plus we have personal friends that were nominated for one mm-hmm. Ruben Pollock and Kaleo they didn't win but they were nominated for one so that's really cool mm-hmm. and uh, I know we had some other friends there involved with that stuff too so um Go back again. And who cares about the TV show? It's all about the music. So go, go and go and look at the list. Um, you know, the, one of the things that stuck out to me, so we're going to talk about this for a second. One of the things that stuck out to me was the instrumental record of the year. I think Mm -hmm. was a fusion jazz record. Piano and bass and other instruments. Right. Not a lot of guitar. But remember the other day I made a post, and maybe I didn't, but I maybe you don't remember it, but I, I talked to you about it, that I thought that guitar's not dying. It just doesn't have a mullet anymore because some of these guitar players at NAMM were unreal good. I mean, right. young kids. Right. Young. I mean, like. 15, 18, 20 years old, and these kids are amazing guitar players, but they are jazz fusion. They are very alternative. You look at somebody like Tozen Abasi, who plays like 10 strings and a weird shaped guitar and does two hand tapping and does lots of different stuff. It's, you know, it's just not Freebird. Right. You know? So it was just very cool to see that. Like after everybody's talking about, Nam's not because I I texted one of my friends and he was walking around and I was like, how is it? And he's like, eh, it was kind it's kind of off this year. Maybe there's some kind of transition happening. Yeah. Yeah. Maybe there's less mullets and there's more new stuff. Which. If you work in a cover band that plays mullet rock, you might need to learn some new songs or update your look a little bit because. I really think stuff is starting to progress. It's just really neat. It's just really neat to watch it. I don't think it's dying. It's just moving on. It's very cool. I really, really am stoked about it, actually. Very positive and very, um, I'm very optimistic after the last, after the NAM show stuff. So, um, and another thing that came up today, did you see the video I posted about, um, knowing your worth like um and the the video if you didn't get to watch the video i post on my facebook today i posted this video and it basically was you know instead of saying oh well fifty dollars an hour and it took me five dollars to make you know five hours to make it so now it's 250 bucks like what's your daily rate you know is it 50 bucks an hour all day long and you know you get you make a thousand dollars a day like if it's if it takes all day for me to make a guitar, then you're going to pay me a thousand bucks or whatever it is. Just not underselling your skill and your knowledge <clears throat> because a lot of people will, they'll look at that. They'll, they'll look at a, a pickup for instance, and they'll say, well, if I go on eBay right now, I can get the magnets and the paper to make a Stratocaster pickup and it'll cost me like $6. Why does the pickup cost me 90 bucks? Well, there's a lot of, all my life working on this stuff to get me to this point. And the thing about it is, is the other parts of value that you build into a product that is not just the parts in the pile on the table, right? So the person that creates the product, the person that makes the pickups or the guitar or the whatever it is, they've spent all this time and money for years and years and years to get to the point where they can build you 
let's say a Stratocaster pickup for 89 bucks. Well, the parts only cost $6, but they've gone to a lot of work and a lot of time and a lot of years and a lot of know-how to get to that point, you know? And so that's where what can happen is two things. One, the customer can undervalue the talent and the know-how that needs to make that happen. And then they can be like, well, that's too expensive. I'm not going to buy it. On the other side of that, the person that's creating the stuff can undervalue the product by allowing that guy to talk him down in price, number one. And the other thing that he can do is he can also undervalue his knowledge and his time when he is pricing his stuff, and that hurts everybody. Um, so it's just, a, and, and, it's, and they'll say, well, yeah, but I can't charge that much because it only costs five dollars. Well, that's where you got to build value into it. You know, here at Dylan Talks Tone, we always I always tell people we don't sell guitars. Um, when you put a deposit down on a guitar, you're buying me, right? You're buying my time and the relationship. It sounds weird to say that you're buying the relationship, but that's what happens. Like even right now, we're giving away hours and hours every week of free stuff mm -hmm. so that people realize what we have in this and how much work we put into all of this stuff so that when they slap down a deposit for a guitar, they know that they're going to get somebody who's going to call them back every time, uh, who's going to return emails, who's going to have conversation with them and have a real relationship with them and build up that value that they feel that they're going to get out of, you know, the dollars that they spend for a guitar. That's why we do all this so that we can let people know that that relationship and all that time invested is what you're paying for, right? So I'm doing all this work before I ever get paid. And a lot of people that are um, building guitars, building furniture, it doesn't matter what it is, have put in all that time to build that relationship with you before they ever got paid for anything. And so you break down all those hours and all those dollars now 1500 bucks for a guitar or $2,000 for a guitar or however much it is doesn't or $89 for a Strat pickup doesn't seem like so much money because of all that investment of all that other time to help that person sound better, right? And grin when they play their guitar, like that's what it's all about. <clears throat> so it's just a very interesting perspective that I wanted to share because it came up a couple times today, you know, on the YouTubes. Or uh, actually, it was on Facebook, I think. It was very cool. What's going on over there in FAQ land? Um, no real questions yet. They're chatting about... Um, so we have um, somebody who was at NAM, So they walked like 24 miles or something. Crazy, right? Um, who is at NAM over there? Do we just have a username? Jaden James. Oh, Okay. Nope, that is a new name for me. I w They've been on the show quite okay. a few times. I was okay. looking up, actually, um, they're talking about some fiber optic things for the neck that mm -hmm. Randy is looking into. Apparently, they had a booth at NAMM, and there's a video. So, I was I was actually finding the YouTube channel, so I get to show it to you later. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. I obviously can't watch the video right now. But I did think I found it. So, we'll so it's probably some sort of fiber optic lighting that goes underneath the fretboard or as part of the neck to probably. It, I think it can be dots or the side markers or, yeah, I don't know. Very It'd be interesting cool. to see that. Yeah, that would be super fun. No, thanks for sharing that. And if there's anything else like that, I guess that's what I was hoping was that people that were actually there because I didn't know about that one. That's one of those kind of under the radar things you wouldn't know unless you walk by and it caught your eye. Because, right. you know, Premier Guitar is not probably going to make no, a video about it or right, something, you know? So that's right. cool. I'm, I'm really glad to, uh, thank you for that and keep it up. If there's anything else like that, please let us know. Um, that's so really awesome. Steve Vai has it. Oh yeah. He had a guitar. In so, Bo. Is that, is that do, the name of a guitar? Yes. Okay. Do you know that he was dressed up in full drag as an old woman? So he looked like, um, the church lady on Saturday night live. Okay. Playing a guitar. When? At Nam. 
Oh, really? Yeah. Did people not know it was him I or did they know it was him? I don't know. I just know the person that shared the video and he's like, this is Steve Vai, dressed up in full drag. I wonder how many people walk by that. I know, right? I don't know. <clears throat> that's pretty funny. That's what I, and then that's, and if somebody wants to verify that or if, you know, I, I'm going on what something somebody shared. Right. So if there is an inaccuracy to that or if something's different or it can be, uh, you can give us more details on that. Please do that because that's, that's all I know right now. <laughs> um, well, I'll tell you what, since we're talking about NAM stuff, I'm going to share some of my favorite stuff um, that I saw at NAM. And then what we're going to do after that is then we're going to talk about um, pickups and stuff because that's what we do. So um, I'm actually going to show you pictures of some of this stuff that I'm really excited about. Um, so we have... Let's see here. Let's go first, because I've been talking about this for weeks, because I have that little baby one down here on the pedal board. The 150 watt version of the Vox New Tube amplifier. And what I have heard about this thing is that it's got clean and then like a dirtier clean and then a dirty with a really dirty. So this thing is pretty flexible. It's supposed to be heavier than obviously the little baby one that's on the board, but not as heavy as a conventional amplifier from what I understand from videos on YouTube. <clears throat> and the very interesting thing about this thing is the power section has a new tube in it as well. So what I understand about this is uh, so far, and I'm looking for more details on this, but from what I understand about it so far is that it has the new tube preamp like the little baby one down here on my board has. And then on the power side, it has a class D amplifier um, with a new tube in front of the class D amplifier. So it's almost like the power side is a preamp and a power amp put together. It sounds like something like that uh, so that it can give us that that tube feel um, in front of, because I, from what I can tell, I don't think you can make tons of power with a new tube. I think you can create the illusion of a tube with a new tube, but you can't create a lot of power. So you couldn't, I, I don't know this for sure, but from what I'm looking at so far, you couldn't put like four of them in a quartet and make a hundred Watts. I think, from what they've done here is they've put it in front of a class D amplifier and let the class D amplifier m do the actual work of making the power, but then using, um, the new tube in front of it on the power side and then have a preamp side also. So, and then have four distinct voices, which is very, very cool. This is going to be a neat thing. Um, I was talking to Jack Harrison from gear guys radio. We're talking, it, it probably won't, replace right away at least all tube amplifiers i don't think that's going to happen but for the guy that does not have a tube amp right now so let's say you're playing a boss katana or let's say you're playing a i don't know anything um a pv something you know and you and you don't want to spend $1,500 for a reissue fender or $1,200 for a reissue fender. This thing I think is going to be right around 800 bucks, maybe right in there. And you're going to get a lot of features in this thing for the money and really, really good sound. So, and it's going to come in a combo and in a head and a cabinet. So hmm. really cool. I think it's, like I said, I don't think it's going to take over the whole world yet, but it is a glimpse into the future. I really do believe that. Um, sticking with amps, let's go over to... Before you skip that, okay. you want to... Somebody said, I was let down by the price of the new Tube Screamer. Hope the new Vox isn't crazy expensive. And then somebody wanted to know what you thought about Satriani's Chrome Boy reissue for 7K. That is a lot of money. Right? There aren't very many guitars that are worth $7,000 new, in my opinion. And <clears throat> same, um, Jaden that was there said, Big highlight is always the Friedman booth. Crazy players coming through and play in full volume. George Lynch, Alex 
Golnich and some incredible session musicians. Check out Jack Gardner. Oh yeah, Jack Gardner for sure. Yep. Um Yeah, and somebody was reiterating. We talked about that the other week that the the new tube itself um Russell saying the new tube itself costs about $150, so it's going to be hard to be cheap on any of that stuff right now. Yeah, so my theory on that and, I, and I, again, I've not done this research for myself. However, I do have a, a a friend who is doing a lot of research on it and I believe that the price point for anything is going to have to start at about 200 to 250 dollars and up. Mm -hmm. Okay, and I really think that anything that is not Korg, okay, so Vox is Korg, Korg who is who invented it. So anything Vox is going to be cheaper on the market than any non Vox stuff, any non Korg owned product. Any non Korg owned product is going to be more expensive, probably. You know, it's like. Like, because they're reselling the technology, right? Exactly. Yeah. It's like when I use somebody else's pickups, that guitar is going to be more expensive because I got to buy it. You know what I mean? Like, it's it's just is what it is. That's kind of how that's how that that economics will work. So, um, two hundred and fifty dollars is not out of the question, in my opinion, for that tube screamer. But I don't think it's that good, from what I've heard. So, <clears throat> but I don't know that to be true either, because I haven't tried it for myself, and a lot of people are really. Uh, this goes back to now we can talk about old people and new tube because if you drive a firebird, chances are you're not going to like the new tube. And if you drive a golf, you're probably going to like it. Like it's all about age. I think it's how old you are and what you're used to. I don't know if it's necessarily just an equivalent to age though. Well, I'm using that as a demographic because that's what that is. I think it may be false. We have somebody <laughs> said, I may buy the Vox amp and send it to you to play and do some videos. And then when you get done, you can ship it to me. Uh, that works for me. I was like, that does not sound terrible at all. No, you ship it here. I'll use it for a couple of weeks and then I'll pay to ship it to you. How about that? We'll make that deal right now. Do I think to I, sign it? I think I already, I already know who that is and I would totally <laughs> be down with whatever deal you make there, that sounds like a great idea. And in fact, I'd do that with anybody. If you want a piece of gear and you want it reviewed that bad, buy it and send it to me. And then I will somehow make it worth your while so that that happens. I think that's a great idea. Maybe for a pedal or something, we'll throw in a cable or something and I'll pay shipping or, you know. We'll... I should do that. That'd be fun. Y'all got his brain running now. We got to yeah. stay on target. Well, just to let... Just on task on again target. to bring everybody. That's what this is about, right? Like we're doing this all together. So that's that I really dig that idea. All right, let's talk about the next thing. This is the Milkman, the amp. I think that's what he calls it. Actually, is the amp. You notice creative, right? Notice it is a pedal. It goes on the pedal board. It weighs two and a half pounds. It has a real high voltage twelve AX seven tube in it. And then on the other side has a 50 watt class D amplifier. So this is a different take on the new tube thing because it's an old tube. So we have the old tube 12 AX7 high voltage in a with a 50 watt class D amplifier. I think that is a really killer, super cool thing. Now here's the deal about it. Um, here's the thing though. Check this out. Um, it has direct out. It has a speaker out um, for recording, for using as a backup amp, for using as a stereo side, something like that. I mean, there is all kinds of fun stuff that could be done with this amp. Um, and I think that's a it's it's not cheap, though. Milkman stuff's not cheap. I can't remember how much it is. I, I think it's eight hundred or nine hundred dollars, too. So. Um, you know, very cool. Um, okay. Now we're going to get into some weird stuff. And if you have really cool stuff that you want to share from Nam, please let us know in the thing over there because she is on it. Um, let's go least dumb to most dumb. That's when, that's what I'm going to do. <laughs> I don't support this messaging. Well, here's the reason why. <laughs> 
I really kind of like some of this stuff, but we're going to have a conversation about it, okay? Um, first of all, we're going to talk about the new Fender. I don't know. What do they call it? Parallels? Mongrels? Something. Anyway, it's a bunch of different stuff put together. So what do we have in this photo right here? We have a Telecaster that looks like a Les Paul. So that's going to upset somebody. But it has a Stratocaster neck on it which is sort of weird. Um, we have a Stratocaster body with a Telecaster neck and Telecaster stuff in it. And then less weird over there is, it looks like some Filtertrons and almost basically like a Tele Deluxe sort of thing. Um, crazy stuff, crazy stuff. Now let's go over to this one. Strat stuff, look over at the guitar on the left. We've got a Strat stuff in a Tele body with a Strat neck. That has a tremolo too, like a proper tremolo. We have a Tele with Jazz Master appointments, which I fully support that. That is very cool. And then we also have a, looks like a Tele with a humbucker with a Tele bridge pickup in the middle with a Tele neck pickup. Which seems really weird, but I bet that is very, very cool. Uh, let's see what else we have here. This is where it gets super weird. Um, the bass is cool. The bass makes sense. But is that a Strata Jazz Master? <laughs> I don't know <laughs> what that is. I am not. I don't. I don't. Uh, well, actually, it's a Strata Stang because those are Mustang pickups. I, I don't. I don't know. Uh, what do you all think? Let me just ask you that. What do you all think of the weirdness that is the new Fender line of, I can't really call it parallels or something. Mongrel just came to mind, so I could just keep saying it. But it's a mix of something. Um, very interesting stuff. I don't, I don't know. What do you all think of that? Because we've been doing that stuff. So while we're on the delay, you want to grab some conversation here? Yes. Don't you think the milkman will go through tubes like crazy? Very easy to bump it around. No, I do not. Okay. Because this technology and that application has been in pro in play for a long time. Um, think of what's that amp? What's that pedal called? The uh, something bone, something tone bone, something like that. Um, it has a tube in it. There's lots of this kind of thing. Um, not like this, but there are things on a pedal board with tubes in them. They've had them for a long time. Um, you know, even Andy makes that delay with the tube in it. Right. And like he says, it will never go bad. Like, you know, for as long as you own the thing or send it back and he would change it out. So they've thought of that, I'm sure. And then at NAM, Nita Strauss became the first female at Abinaz to have her own model. Thought that was cool, but surprised they never did it before. And the Jag, and te Jag slash Telly you were just talking about has a Mustang bridge, right? That was a question. Uh, let's go back and look. Let's go back and look because I don't recall. Wait, the Jag Telly. So that's the Strat thing. It looks like it does. It is very, very odd. Very odd. I'm very interested in these. In a weird sort of way. Some of them I don't get. I don't get the, the telly with the strat pit guard and everything. That's weird looking to me. And then the other one I don't get is the obviously the telly Les Paul thing. I love it, but the world is really, really going to be angry about that one. There are going to be some people that do not like that. That's kind of funny. So I, it, in a way, I fully support it, even though I think it's really weird. What does anybody else say about that Fender stuff? Anything? Nope, nothing yet. All and right. Somebody had a further comment about the tube. I would worry about the tube becoming microphonic. I think they're going to have a way to figure that out. I really do feel that like... That sounds really creepy in the background, by the way. Does it? Yeah. Just saying. Like that. 
Um, okay. Um, that's what happens when I just have a guitar in my hand. Okay, so we're going to talk about another thing. Now, I couldn't find a picture of the right guitar. So I'm going to give show you the picture of last year's guitar. <laughs> they said you're talking about weird guitars, and somebody said kind of like your bat wing guitar. Sorry. My bat wing? <laughs> my bat fish. Exactly. That's what I'm saying. This has already been done. I've already done it. It's already been done. Absolutely. Absolutely, it's already been done. I think I got a text message coming in regarding the show as well. Um, oh, somebody also mentioned the Marshall Scott actually just texted me and said the Marshall Origin series amps. Does that mean they're listening in? It's possible it's a con- coincidence because oh, he's been telling oh, me. Oh. But good timing. Marshall Origin series amps. Uh, very, very cool. Um, I think Premier Guitar has a... A video about those definitely check those out um, he mentioned something here that we're going to talk about in a minute so I'm not going to mention that yet but uh, this is the Kiesel okay so this guitar is not the right guitar but this is the closest thing I could find Kiesel came out with a whole line of headless guitars um, and while I do not subscribe to the marketing stuff that he said that the reasons why a headless guitar would be cool uh he lost me when he said you know like peg heads start to bend backwards he lost me when he said that but i really think this headless guitar thing is very cool i think it's really cool um and there are cool reasons to have it for sure um very cool so i this is the wrong guitar but it looks kind of like that I just wanted to share that with you. Um, So we won't spend a lot of time on that one. But Kiesel has a lot of neat stuff. And they um, they are very reasonably priced, too. And they're really pretty. Mm -hmm. I remember. Really pretty guitars. Like, the Mm -hmm. wood and stuff is just amazing. This is my dad calling me from Mexico. Well, he just commented on something about how can I put my two cents worth in on the subject of worth oh uh oh okay well I'll tell you what hey dad we are live on we're live on the radio right now because I'm in the middle of my show and the only reason I answered my phone is because uh you're probably calling from Mexico or something (laughs) okay hang up I'm gonna, okay, I'm going to put you on speakerphone, and we're going to see if we can pull this off. I don't know if this is going to work or not. Uh, let's see. Uh, it, hopefully, it doesn't feedback or do something weird. Okay. Let's try it. Okay. okay. I, had, I had something to say about, remember you were talking about your worth, you know, about a product and so forth, and you have all the years of experience and knowledge. Yes. Right? Okay, I have the same feelings about that, about club owners, okay? And how much they pay musicians when they want them to come and play. All right? Because here's the deal. Now, let's say I'll I'll go to a club, you know, um, right here in California, and they'll say, well, how much you want? And I go, well, you know, of course, there's union scale if that's available. But the point is... Because they say, well, why don't you just bring your stuff in and play for exposure? And oh, so oh exposure bucks. Is, yeah, those exposure bucks. Those are, yeah. Yeah. So what they're saying is they want you to bring in like $10,000 worth of music equipment, 35 years, 40 years of experience, and sit down and play for about two or three hours for some exposure. See, I don't need exposure. Okay. And musicians don't. They need to get paid because that's, you know, after 35, 40 years, there's value there. Yes. Okay. Exactly. See, somehow, club owner, somehow club owners, somehow club owners don't understand that. And that's just my two cents worth on that value. <laughs> I understand okay. and I absolutely uh I absolutely agree. Are you calling from California or are you calling from Mexico? 
I'm calling from Mexico. All right. Well, everybody, this is my dad. He plays guitar too. He's the one that got me started when I was six years old. I don't know if anybody we've ever talked about this before, but this is my dad, and uh, he actually has a book. Yeah, we'll drop a link. We'll in. drop a link. He he actually teaches guitar, and he does it online, uh, website and everything. So uh, we'll drop a link in the in the description of this video when we upload it. And thanks for calling, Dad. I'll talk to you soon. Yeah, well, that's that's my pet peeve. That's my two cents worth. And uh, so somehow club owners don't appreciate that, but that's what I won't do it. So, <laughs> you know, the best thing to do is what I like doing is I like um, busking. I like going sitting down on the pier, getting my guitar out and playing for people when they walk by and they buy my book, buy CDs, and, you know, and it's just a, a free flow playing music and you don't have to worry about all that other yep i understand completely that's that's the best approach well that thank you thanks for calling oh okay yeah so i'll, I'll talk to adios. you i'll talk to you soon <laughs> Well, that was really funny because that has never happened before. My dad, like my phone rang. So let me tell you, my dad um, uh, lives in Northern California. He's a he's a jazz guitarist and um, he's been playing for a long time. This is he literally is how what got me started years and years and years ago. And I always talk about my red Stratocaster. He gave me that when I was a kid. Um, and he's the reason I you know started playing guitar a long time ago. Um, well, he lives in Northern California and he winters in mexico so they've been in mexico diving like scuba diving and stuff uh, for like the last three weeks and so when the phone rang out i was, was almost like a oh you know my dad's calling from mexico hopefully there's not some kind of emergency so it kind of cracks me up that he called and he's like no i want to be part of this show <laughs> i have something to say and i don't know how to say it love so it, love you know it. if that works we're gonna have to figure out a higher tech way to do that because i would love to take phone calls well people are eating it up they're like wait can you make that a part of the show <laughs> <laughs> they're never gonna talk to me again they're just gonna call you um dang it we'll have to figure out we'll have to figure out something we'll have to figure out something for that um no I, that was a real treat i'm actually glad that that happened it's funny i actually just uh, for those of you that are listening on the radio hopefully it sounded okay it sounded good in my headphones oh for sure all i did was hold the phone up to the microphone we put them on speaker and held it up to the phone and, which yeah. was hilarious yeah oh my god <laughs> she took a picture we'll post it on facebook later that was that was pretty awesome okay the last thing i want to get everybody's thoughts on this i am not a i'm not sure if this is cool or stupid or what okay but you have seen it already because people have been talking about it. This is the pro Cro the Proco rat tail. Okay? What this is? <clears throat> ugh, this is I, I don't we're, even Wait, before we get into that, were rat tails popular like all over the country? That wasn't just like a southern thing, right? Did you oh. know people with rat tails? Oh yeah. Okay. Uh, just yeah, checking. Absolutely. It, so Did you have a rat tail? <laughs> no. So here's <laughs> Not the Not you. I mean, people listening. The people that... Who had a rat tail? Their kids. Whose kids? The people that are playing Leonard Skinner songs in oh bars gosh. right now. Oh, gosh. Their kids, when they were five years old, <laughs> had rat tails. That's, right. that's who it is. I'm being stereotyping and mean, but you know it. You do know it. In your IROC Z. All right. So, I always wanted an IROC Z when I was a kid, actually. But not the 305 one. I wanted the 350 TPI one. If everybody knows what that is. Um, okay. The Proco Rat Tail. This thing, look at the plug. See that funny plug? The 90 degree plug's got a little knob on it. Uh, there is a battery in there. There is a little circuit board in there. And it actually is an overdrive pedal in a cable. I do not understand it. I don't. I mean, I understand it. I get what it is. But I don't understand why um, when I have all of this. So I don't really know why. If you buy one and you use one and you like it, I should just buy one and give it away to is somebody. It, is it new? It's new. Okay. So nobody probably has one. No, I okay. don't think so. We should try to get one. I, You know, I, I really should just try to get one and test it because... In theory, it could be cool 
because if you have, let's say you had a Fender Deluxe, like that's a Deluxe. Uh, Deluxe is an amp that many, many, many people mm-hmm. uh, gig with. And if you could just reach down and do that and not have a pedal or anything, you know, maybe. But I don't know. It's just a weird, I, I don't know. It's an interesting application of a thing. Actually, that Vox MV50 down here doesn't break up at all. So maybe that would be a thing. Just that little baby thing and you wouldn't need any pedals or anything. I don't know. What do you all think? Because I think it's weird. But, you know, not everybody agrees with me very often. So, you know, it is 940 already. We are cranking through a show. Um, Anybody asking? I don't know what the agenda is. Is anybody saying anything over there? We're still talking about rat tails and mohawks. Okay. (laughs) <laughs> well, fill me in on that while I switch to this other guitar, and then we're going to talk about why pickups should be changed sometimes. Okay. No, we just had um, somebody confirm that rat tails were all over Philly in the 80s. Somebody said they had a rat tail with a mohawk, so then it was, is that a party in the front and the back? <laughs> um, and somebody said, what is the point of the rat tail plug? I'd be very curious to hear the type of clipping the cable could actually give you. There's videos on YouTube because it is a thing. I mean, it sounds like a rat. It does. It does sound like a rat. Their pedal. It sounds like a rat. What does that mean? What do you mean it sounds like a rat? So the rat, there's the two main, for those of you that are not familiar, uh, there's probably four of you in the world that are not familiar. Um, but well, I'm gonna be one of you're going to be one of those people. There's tube screamers. Yes. And there's rats. Okay. And then there's metal zones and there's boss DS ones. Okay. Those are like the four. If you could break it down to like Strat, Telly, yeah, yeah. Les Paul, SG, 335. Okay. Those four pedals are like the baseline of honestly of kind of like all overdrives. And so... It's like if you were a Vox guy or a Fender guy amp wise, you were a tube screamer or a rat guy or, okay. you know, a Fender okay. guy or a Marshall guy. You were a rat guy or a tube screamer guy. OK, so that tone in in the pedal is it makes a lot of sense. Um, but in a cable, I don't know if it does. It, I mean, it might. It might make total sense. I just have no idea. It just sounds weird to me. Um, so let's talk about some some pickups i have this very cool guitar this is a customer's guitar uh dropped off this weekend um this is a epiphone lucille really neat guitar um and we're not going to talk about veritones right now but it has a veritone in it and it's really really fun um but here's where pickups sometimes can fail and she can keep talking and you can ask questions and we will keep talking but i'm going to just share some tones with you Um, this thing is very, very muddy. That's with the tone all the way up, okay? And then the bridge pickup is really... Same thing. Really, really super just flat sounding, Mm -hmm. right? Yeah. There's no high end to it at all. There's no... It's so pretty though. Isn't it? Um, So here's why this happens. Let's talk about it. The reason a lot of times it happens, because we get questions about um, pickup material all the time, magnets, like magnet choice. So here's what happens. A lot of times in a very cheap pickup, they'll use a ceramic magnet. The problem is a ceramic magnet makes it sound all edgy and harsh and really like, like rip your ears out, you know, like really super razor blades. So then what they do is they because the magnet is probably like the, a third of the price or a quarter of the price of an Aldeco magnet. So they use a ceramic one. 
one of the main components of the pickup. Then, in order to offset that edgy, sharp razor blade sound, then they'll go ahead and use tons and tons and tons of winds of cheap wire and make it like, you know, 14K or something to take the edge off. And what you're left with is this sound that we have here. Um, and so th there's really no way to fix it. I mean, we could take out, we could change pots. That might fix it a little because there's some things that cheap pots do too. <clears throat> but overall, there's not a whole lot you can do when the thing sounds like this. The other thing that it does is this. So we're going to put some drive on it. Hopefully we don't kill anybody. Now, dynamics would allow us a good dynamic pickup, usually lower output, would allow us to turn our volume down to about seven and have a clean tone, but we don't here. It sounds almost exactly the same, just not very loud. All the way down and then it just goes away now it's gone as that voltage lowers you should be able as the res resistance you know uh, lowers to zero as the pickup starts to you know go towards zero on the volume then you should be able to hear the pickups will pass less voltage to the output and what will happen is you should be able to have a cleaner signal. So it should be able to clean up as we turn the volume down. It does not do that in this case. So, and the other thing is noise. A lot of cheaper pickups are noisier. Uh, and and it'll, it's funny because it's a humbucker, right? So you'd think it wouldn't be noisy, but it's because of the frequencies that are there versus not there. Um, it's like the noise is always there, but you can't hear it sometimes depending on what frequencies are masked by mud, <laughs> if that makes sense. Um, so now here's the other thing that can happen. And I did not test this ahead of time, so hopefully it works. Okay, so here is tons of gain, okay? And here's what happens. It just sounds like fuzz. I'm, I'm strumming all the strings. That's but, crazy. Right? But you might as well just be hitting the low E. Oh, it sounds the same. Because it sounds kind of the same, right? Isn't that nuts? So when we have a more dynamic pickup... What can happen is then we can have uh, it can clean up, you know, and it can have a better tone uh, as we lower the volume, as we use more notes. Obviously, we play all those notes for a reason. So let's do this. And I actually didn't plan on this. So hopefully this guitar is halfway kind of in tune. So let's do this. Let's play my V with my pickups in it, kind of back to back, because these are the pickups that I'm going to put in that guitar. Oh, hang on. Let's 
switch this over to this and do the same thing we were doing before. So here we have every note. Lots of clarity. Oh, actually. There we go. Let's turn this back down to about seven. And they're really touch sensitive too. So we, even when we have our volume up, we can do. Super touch sensitive, super way more dynamic. You can do a lot more fun stuff with them. Um, just playing with a little bit of boost. Now I'll tell you like, I'll, I'll use uh, just an amp with a little bit of boost. And this will be my main tone. And then I'll just use that. And I'll just use the knob to pick how much gain I need. So you can do that when the pickup is more dynamic. You cannot do that uh, with a less expensive one sometimes. So can we answer a couple of pickup questions? Absolutely. All right. Um, let's go backwards because this is probably in relation to something you just said. Okay. So more wines means it doesn't clean up with less volume. Not always. But usually the way they work that, then yes, because they put more wines on the pickup and um, you lose high end and you lose, in my opinion, you lose a note accuracy with that. Yep. More wines cause that. Um, Eric Johnson pickups has Alnico three in the bridge and Alnico five in the middle and neck. Why do you think he did that? Because Alnico three in the bridge and five in the middle and five in the neck. Mm -hmm. I middle. would do, I would do exactly the same thing. Um, because a strat pickup is really ice picky and edgy. And if you, um, make that a little softer, Make it compress a little bit more. It doesn't do that rip your face off sort of thing when you go down to that bridge pickup. I fully support that. What else we got? We have a listener that is, okay, you ready for the backstory before I yes, tell you this part? Absolutely. So, you know, we've talked about mullets and rat tails and mohawks and old people in IROCs <laughs> and whatever, right? <laughs> Yep. I got, it's a long story. I had a white IROC Z2 with a 350 throttle body injection. I'm getting ready to buy a Hellcat now. Time to retire the IROC. That's awesome. <laughs> I would buy a Hellcat too. So, I saw said somebody. if he got down here, he would let us drive it. And I was like, I will come to you if I get to drive it. Yep, <laughs> I would come to you. I would love to do a review on one of those for our other channel, actually. That would be amazing. Um, that's really funny. Oh, he's serious. He said he's going tomorrow to pick the colors and options. Like he's literally oh, in the process so of buying one. Cool. That's exciting. Yeah, that's very exciting. Yeah. Jason that is, very is listening tonight. He said, I'm a sucker for low output humpuckers. Jason. Oh, humbuckers. I can't even talk. Sabo. Oh, right on. Yeah, oh yeah. He so uh that 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 listener there, um, Jason, he um he has my favorite guitar. I've I'm not a Les Paul guy, but he has my favorite Les Paul. I told him, I have always told him that if I could have his Les Paul, then I would have a Les Paul. If I can't have his Les Paul, then I don't want one because <laughs> that guitar is really good. And in fact, I used um, that guitar to model our DAFs um, because it has Tim Shaw pickups in it. The original old school Tim Shaw pickups in it. So that's what we used. Yeah, super fun. Super fun stuff. That's a cool guitar. 
So we're getting um, another group we're a part of on Facebook commenting on their experience at NAM also. Actually commenting on your live video pre-show that they shared somewhere. Anyway. Um, okay. Said they got to see the Kiesel headless. Oh, Rices or whatever it's called. Um, oh, said Cyrus. it wasn't for me, but it was really pretty. And same person really agreed with what your dad said. And he had to give the breed love guy hell for not having a lefty out of a hundred guitars. <laughs> oh my goodness. Isn't that crazy? Yeah. It is crazy. So. Yeah. Well, very cool. I don't even know where you're getting these from, but. I'm all over the place. I'm so multi-talented. No, thank you for doing that because I, we would have missed those comments otherwise. It's getting really close to time, um, isn't it? Five minutes. Okay. Yeah. If you have a question real quick, get it in. Um, and if we miss it, just ask after the video is done rendering. Yeah. Because the video then we'll, still lives, but these live chats disappear. They do. I'm really glad that so many people got to participate tonight because I was hoping that we would get this kind of feedback on this NAM thing because there were so many people ahead of time that were so kind of negative about it. And then once I started seeing things happen and, and videos come back from it stuff, I was like super stoked like some of the stuff coming out of there. You can just see maybe it, for me, it was more the people than it was the gear. Like these guitar players are so good and mm -hmm. young and just, new edgy cool just things just refreshing right yes yeah. absolutely and that's what i was really i don't know i've been on that lately like i just want to encourage people to to play like you know i don't care about saving the vintage whatever like it doesn't matter to me i just want people to play guitar and i think they are i think they are and i don't i don't think we give them enough credit for it sometimes but it's really really cool man i'm super stoked super stoked on it well, I'll tell you what, I really appreciate everybody listening tonight. <clears throat> we, uh, we love doing this. This is so fun. And, uh, thanks for everybody participating and being a part of the conversation. You can continue to be a part of the conversation either on our Facebook page at Dylan talks tone, or you can, um, after this video, it takes a few minutes for it to like populate on YouTube mm -hmm. and then continue the conversation in there in the comments. And I will, we will keep an eye on it. I get notifications on my phone on every YouTube comment. I try to answer every YouTube question. Sometimes I don't get to them when they pile up super fast, but I try to go back even if it's a, a week later and make sure that everybody gets answered. But again, anything in the live chat is my fault if it doesn't get hap you know. So if you didn't get your question answered, ask it again after we're not live. Yes. Because we want to hit everybody and also... And they're really digging the calls. Somebody else said something about, I what? wish we could take calls. Well, I'll try to figure it out. Here's the problem with that is live radio and phone calls that I cannot screen somehow yeah. is really, really difficult because then I don't know who I'm putting on the radio. So it, it it's there's like a trust and, factor that comes there. And yeah, it's and there's really a tough. thing with calls... Because some of the questions we get even in here can be like really random and off topic. And if we have a a topic mm -hmm. range we want to cover, we need to make sure. And there's a delay. So like, yeah, it'll, yeah. it'll have to be thought about a little yeah, bit. Yeah, we'll have to think about that a little bit and how to do that. Um, but I really appreciate the idea. And obviously <laughs> we figured out a weird way to That was super get, last minute. Yeah. yeah. I had no idea that Not was going to happen. That was pretty awesome. Um, if there's a way to figure something out, I will. And it's possible that we may be able to do a call-in portion that we pre-arrange. Um, I might not be able to take live spontaneous calls, but if you had a phone call, if you had a question, you could call in and ask it. And I would tell you to call in at 939 exactly. And, yeah. we, and we would be able to. So let me think about that a little bit. And I'm going to talk to my other uh, show host on our other radio station and see how he does it because he does take live calls. Absolutely. But they're always prearranged. So we'll we'll have to figure something out. But I would love to do that. It's all about the interaction in the community. So I would really love to do that. Um, 
you know, my dad gets a pass cause he's my dad and he was calling from Mexico. <laughs> so, um, but we'll, we'll try to figure something out. That's very, very cool. Uh, otherwise make sure that you see a, check out our YouTube or I mean our uh, website over at Dylan talks tone.com. Cause we have all kinds of cool stuff there and make sure that you continue to check us out every Monday night right here on YouTube's Dylan talks tone. And, uh, also on KPR live.com tomorrow morning, there will be a thing up there on KPR live that you will be able to listen to. We're also going to be on anchor.fm tomorrow, probably about noon or a little after in podcast form. So you'll be able to actually listen to it as a podcast, the audio portion. And yeah, that was a a lot of things. So until next week, uh, I hope everybody has a good time playing guitar and we will see you all on the internet. And for some reason, I always mess that up. Darn.